Hi friends, it's Lauren. Welcome back to my craft room for another video. I'm thankful to have you here for some Trinity Stamps inspiration where we're gonna use the Harvest Rainbow Stampin' Coordinating Die Set for three different cards. There is so much in this stamp set, it's so versatile, and I wanna show how I came up with four different style cards using this stamp set. We of course have some embellishment mixes we're gonna be using today to make our own shaker blend. I also have the acetate shaker pouches. I do end up using the layered size. I wasn't sure when I was going through all my supplies. I also have the thankful and grateful three by four stamp and coordinating dies. And then two of the cutest stamp sets ever. We have a bunny burrow four by six and mouse house four by six as well as their coordinating dies and I will pull in other things here and there as we go but that's going to be the bulk of what we're going to use for our three cards today. So I've already stamped out all of the different images that I'm going to be coloring with alcohol markers. So I did use Ink on 3's Blackout Ink to stamp these images and I am using Oh Hoo Hoo Honolulu art markers which are alcohol markers and I'm going to just go through my coloring kind of quickly here for all of the different color combinations, but I'm using R170 and R150 for the reds of all of my images. For my orange, I'm using Y10 and Y4, so that will be the pumpkins and some of the leaves. And for yellow, which will be more leaves as well as some details on the flowers, it's gonna be Y6 and Y1. Most of my color combinations are gonna be just two colors, very simple cartoony vibes is what I'm going for. For the more yellow green, I'm using GY5 and GY4, and then I wanted to bring in more of a blue green, a teal color, so I'm doing BG1 as the darkest tone and G5 as the lighter tone. For the purple kind of vibes of this card, because I've got some cute grapes, I'm going to use R340 for the darkest color. And I try my best to add shading with dark colors where I think the shadows will be on my images. And then I bring in the lighter color, and for this one it's R282 to blend out that shadow and again I'm going for more of a cartoon look so just two colors really makes me happy when I color like this. For my browns I'm doing BR1 and BR2 and that's the darker brown combination. I also have a lighter brown and I'm using E240 and E220 to color in more leaves um, all over my card. For my kind of white gray colors. I'm using YG080 and YG040. And this again, it's not really white obviously, but this is going to be more of the lighter gray colors of my images. I'm also going to use the darker YG080 and YG040 to kind of blend in and color all around the rest of my leaves and that pile of leaves. Now I will show you all of the coloring for my critters because I know that's probably um, the more important of the coloring. So for my hedgehog here, she is BR1, 2, and 3 for her, I guess, fur. They're kind of more needly, right? So her hair <laughs> for the sake of this coloring in this image. And then I'm using E240 and E220 as her lighter color. So her face and her arms and body and ears. Now for her stomach, I will use this lighter color to be the shadow of her tummy. And then I'm bringing an E030, which is more of a kind of pink peachy color to blend that out. And then I also colored in her ears as well as the rest of the critters, their ears in that same color. For my mouse, I'm using the YG080 and 
4-0 as my, again, grayishy color scheme. Um, I wanted my critters to all look a little bit different, so um, I'm using these yellow-gray colors for my mouse. And uh, my worm, which is, I think, my favorite of all the critters, <laughs> is going to be R9 and R050. And these two colors are quite different, so you might want to go twice with the lighter color to really blend in those two, but I wanted my worm to look very pink. <laughs> For the raccoon, I'm using warm grays, so I'm starting with WG130, and this is gonna be the darkest color. This is like the black of my raccoon. And then I brought in WG090 to be the lighter tone. And there is kind of a big jump between these two colors, so you may need to work that blend just a little bit um, if you want a little bit more of a smoother transition between the two. For the lighter fur of my raccoon, I'm doing WG070 as the darker tone, and this will be the extra stripes on my raccoon's tail as well as the ears and body, except for the tummy. I'm going to color it kind of similar to my hedgehog, so I have WG050, and that is my lighter tone, so blending those together. And just like the hedgehog, I will use it to be the darker color on the stomach of the raccoon. And then I'm going to bring in that same um, kind of pink color to color in its ears and its tummy, which I know is not really raccoon-like, but I still think it looks really cute. So here's a close-up of those images so you can kind of see how I like to color them and I used coordinating dyes to cut all of those out and I'm really excited to build the three different cards. So we're going to jump into our first card now that everything is kind of prepped and ready. I have a piece of watercolor cardstock because I'm going to do some watercoloring <laughs> and I'm taking the first rainbow. So this is the rainbow that has um, solid outline and uh, room to color if you would like to for the rainbow and all of the rainbow stripes are together in one big stamp. And I'm going to be embossing, so I'm just grabbing some embossing ink and I'm going to stamp my rainbow down and I do end up stamping it twice. The joy of having a misty <laughs> lets you stamp more than once. And I did use some anti-static powder before stamping, but I'm going to be using a uh, gold embossing powder. So this is Gold Rush from Ink on 3, and I'm going to completely cover my rainbow, and then I will use my embossing tool to melt those little uh, embossing powder particles down. <laughs> And I like to do the back sometimes if my paper starts to curve, it just helps with curving it back so that the paper is flat. And I really love how pretty these leaves look with that gold embossing powder, but I wanted to add some ink to my background, but not on the rainbow, just everywhere else around it. So I brought in my little blending tool here and I'm using Distress Oxide and Antique Linen, and I'm gonna completely go around my rainbow. Again, I'm not coloring in the rainbow, and I wasn't really focusing on a perfect blend because I'm gonna be spraying some water and adding some splatter, and this is gonna be a panel for a shaker card, so there will be lots of busyness and fun in front of it, so the blending does not have to be perfect. So I brought in that Distress Sprayer, and I sprayed it a few times, and then used a towel to pick up the excess water. And now I'm gonna move into watercoloring. So I'm bringing in my Distress watercolor pencils, and I'm going to use a water brush. So this is kind of like a marker with a brush tip and I'm just going to pick up the color off of my watercolor pencil and then apply it down to my rainbow. So I'm starting with a deep red and adding that to the first row of leaves. So I'm going to show kind of how I do the first row of my rainbow here and then I'll kind of jump through the rest as you don't need to see me watch me paint a full rainbow. I started with the red, like I said, and then moving into more of a rusty orange. And I do go back and add in more color into the leaves so that way there's different kind of darkened spots in that color of the rainbow. And then I went to more of a yellow orange and I'm coloring in the third row and then brought in yellow for the fourth row. 
and I will bring in a yellow green for the next one. And then I'm going to go more green green for the final row. So sticking with those warmer tones, very fall themed. I will bring in a darker green once that light green dries and I'm just going to add some of that dark green into a few of the leaves. Like I, I really want kind of a dark pop here and there in those um, different leaves. And then I brought in brown for my yellow. So just having a little bit of pop and uh, darker colors throughout the rainbow. Once that is dry, I'm going to bring in some Distress Ink and this is Ground Espresso and I just kind of squished it onto my glass mat here, added some water and I have a paintbrush and I'm going to flick lots of this Distress Ink all over my background panel. Again, going for a very painted look. Once that is dry, I will bring out my rectangles. The, this is set A of the clean cut layers. And I'm going to pick the coordinating rectangle to fit inside of the um, acetate shaker pouches. And again, I'm using the layer size. So this is four by five and a quarter. So I'm just making sure I'm grabbing the correct rectangle and that is the second largest in the set A and I will run that through my die cut machine. And I'm going to center my rainbow on the left and right side of my rectangle, but I'm gonna have it be a little bit higher up on the panel uh, than the bottom. So there's extra room on the bottom for my uh, sentiment once I get to that step. My panel is ready to be turned into a shaker, so I'm going to go ahead and add some adhesive to the back side. So using my tear tape, I'm just going to add um, adhesive to all four sides of my panel, and then I will use my pickup stick, the pointy part, to uh, peel off the back side of the adhesive, so the release paper. And I'm gonna do that on three of the four sides. I almost did all four, but just three. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the inside of that shaker pouch. So I'm going to peel off the protective sheet, again, just using my little poking tool to help me get that up. I do it on the um, flap that glues to the back side of my panel. So just in case I scratch it, it won't be noticeable, but it's an easy way to peel off that protective layering. And I'm gonna start with adding just one of the um, flaps to the back side, and I'm using my scoring tool to really help me crease the acetate. This is some strong and sturdy acetate. You definitely don't need to worry about your shaker bits going anywhere. And I realized that I probably should have folded over on these score lines before gluing it down, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the other three, just to help me with um, gluing this shaker panel together. So once I have those done, I'll go ahead and glue the two sides down. And again, I'll use my scoring tool to really help reinforce that fold and make sure that that adhesive is nice and secure to the acetate and the back of my panel. For my shaker bits, I'm going to create my own mix. And right now I have first sprout confetti. I also brought in some, um, I believe this is fish food, but I think it's sold out right now. So I'm going to say sunset peach for the sake of this video. I also brought in crunchy leaves, clay embellishment mix, and my favorite favorite, the cave crystals. And I made my own mix and I made a little, a little too much, but that's okay. I'll save it for something else. And uh, once I was happy with the amount that was in my shaker, I'm going to try to get it all as flat as possible so I can glue down my final side and have my shaker be as flat as it can be and not all bundled up at the bottom of my shaker and it will be more of a pillow. I want my panel to adhere and be flat on my card. So once I glue down that fourth side, my shaker is all set and I can start gluing my card together. So I have my card base and I'm gonna go ahead and use my scoring tool to reinforce that fold. And I have some kind of a bronze shimmery card stock that I'm going to glue down to my card panel. It's A2 in size. And then I'm gonna bring in some 
thick adhesive. This is a one inch from scrapbook.com and I wanted to make sure this shaker panel was going to stay closed and it was going to stay on my card and not go anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim a bunch of pieces to fit on the back side of this shaker panel and then using my little pokey tool again I will peel off the release paper from the back of this adhesive and I will glue this to the center of my card. And I'm really loving the vibes of this card. The color scheme is so pretty. I love this green and orange and brown together. It's perfect for fall. But we need to add our sentiment. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp the You Are a Blessing stamp from the Harvest Rainbow stamp set. And I brought in some cream colored cardstock. And I'm going to stamp in brown. And this is Versafine Claire in Pinecone. And this is a brand new to me stamp set, so I probably should have cleaned it before I stamped it. So it does take a couple stamps, well, three stamps to stamp clean, um, which is not a big deal. Like I said, I just should have cleaned it and wiped it down before use. Sometimes there is a bit of a coating on stamps, and as you can see, that third one stamped perfectly. There is a coordinating die, which is so amazing. I love that about Trinity Stamps. Coordinating dies for my sentiments just brings me so much joy. <laughs> and there's also a shadow die. So I die cut the shadow out of that same bronzy shimmery cardstock. And I'm using my reversible tweezers and glue with a fine point tip to glue this sentiment down to its shadow. Once that's in place, I can glue this to the front of my card and I'm going to glue it to the center and more towards the bottom. Like I said, I die cut my rainbow so it was a little, more, little bit more towards the top of the panel so there would be lots of room for the sentiment under it as well as when the shaker bits kind of settle, you can still see all of the rainbow. Once that sentiment is dry, that will finish off our first card. I hope you like this take on the shaker card and using that rainbow with gold and watercolors. And here's a close up of that card. For our second card, we're gonna get colorful to match our little bouquet of fall harvest veggies and grapes. So I went through my stash of cardstock extras, so like all my scraps, and I picked out an orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and brown. And then I went through my VersaFine Clear inks and I picked some colors that I thought would match those card stocks. So I'm using Summertime, Golden Meadow, Shady Lane, Warm Breeze, Monarch, and Fallen Leaves. Now I actually started with die cutting the separate rainbow pieces out of their card stock first. I find that when I have stamps like these, I can, they're too pliable. <laughs> and a lot of times I'll stamp them and it won't fit into the die once I go to die cut them. So a way around that is to do the die cutting first. And I went ahead and placed the negative space in my Misty. And then I lined up the stamp inside of the opening, picked it up with the Misty door, and now I can put my die cut rainbow piece in for stamping. So I have for the first color here, orange is gonna be the largest. And like I said, I'm using Summertime VersaFine Clear, and I do stamp it twice. It looks great after the first stamp, but I wanted the color to be a little bit more vibrant, so I will stamp it two times here. And that is how you can get your stamp to fit perfectly on its coordinating die when it is a little bit too pliable. <laughs> so I'm gonna move on to yellow, green, blue, purple, and brown. And I have my fun harvest, or well, my second harvest rainbow. So now that those pieces are done and they coordinate so cute with my little harvest veggies here, I'm going to bring out the rest of my materials here to create my card background. So I'm bringing, again, I love this set, a good nested layered rectangle set is absolutely needed in every craft room. And I used, again, one of the A2 Clean Cut rectangles to cut out a piece of cardstock and this is just a white piece of cardstock that I like to use for ink blending and I'm just going to add something to ground my images 
um, using scattered straw and my little yellow Distress Oxide blending buddy here. And uh, once I have that, I'm gonna work on adding in my rainbow. So you can go up as high as you want with that uh, yellow ink or you know any color ink that you want to use if you're gonna replicate this card. I just wanted something to add in a little bit of color to my background and like I said, to ground my images. I'm using these thin, long adhesive foam adhesive strips to wrap around my arches of my rainbow and I find that it's really easy to curve foam adhesive if you take off the release backing from both sides. So it's sticky already but it helps just you know really curve around my rainbow. I'm going to use my grid mat here to help me get my rainbow as centered and straight as possible and I'm starting with the largest one because I know that it's going to touch the edges and it will just, you know, the grid mat will be much easier if I can easily see where the ends of my rainbow can line up. And I'll just repeat this process again for the rest of my rainbow. So I started with orange and I'm going to tuck in my yellow. And then I'll move into green, blue, purple, and brown again. And they just fit so perfectly inside each other. And it's such a great way to, you know, die cut and add a lot of fun colors to your harvest rainbow. And for the pumpkins and all my little veggies and leaves, I'm going to bring in Trinity Stamps foam adhesive. It's a little bit thicker than what I was using for my rainbow pieces. So that way I know it will fit nicely and nested on top of my rainbow. I'm going to grab a pencil just to draw kind of some, you know, guiding lines of where I need the foam adhesive since I didn't need to cover the full back as it will overlap a bit with the rainbow. And once I have those lines in place, I'll add that foam adhesive and I'll pull off the release paper and I'll get this glued to the bottom of my card background just under my rainbow. So again, trying to use the grids on my mat to help me get this as centered as I can and that will finish off the design and color and images of my card. But of course, we do need a sentiment. So let's get it onto a card base. I have another sheet of this shimmery bronzy cardstock. It's what I cut the shadow part of my die for the first card. So I like to cut kind of in the middle so that way I can use it as a background for another card. And just using my tape runner to glue this down to an A2 card base. Again, this sheet of the bronze cardstock is A2 in size. And then I will glue down my rainbow and harvest veggie seam. Now I'm going to bring in my sentiment and I apologize I didn't realize I had my sparkling water in frame here um, but I'm going to repeat the same process like I did for my rainbows with my thankful sentiment and I'm going to stamp it in black ink. I wanted it to match the black ink that I used for coloring so this is Versafine and Onyx Black and I'm just stamping the thankful from my thankful and grateful stamp set which is the same set that these um, little veggies and grapes <laughs> are from. I use my reversible tweezers and some glue with a fine point tip to add adhesive to the back of my sentiment. And then I want it to be centered, so I'm going to glue it on top of my pumpkin. I felt like that was the largest part of my little, you know, colored in images and adding it on top of the pumpkin wouldn't take away from the color because you could still see a lot of orange around my sentiment. I'm bringing back in those orange sequins. Again, we're gonna pretend this is Sunset Peach for this video. They are very, very similar in color. So I will use my pickup tool to add sequins all around the card and then use it to glue them down as well. That will finish off our second card here, and here is a close-up of this rainbow. I hope the tips and tricks were useful for you for this stamp set and these individual rainbow arches. Our final card is going to use our pile of leaves from the Harvest Rainbow stamp set and I'm just going to go ahead and jump to get my card base ready. I have another A2 card base another A2 sheet of that bronze cardstock 
and I die cut another panel of white cardstock that I like to use for ink blending and I'm going to create a very basic background scene. So starting with a Distress Oxide ink pad and vintage photo, I'm adding a grounding to my panel, a ground to my panel, and then I'm using speckled egg to add in a full autumny sky and I'm not even blending them together. I'm just getting them onto my panel. I do have a bit of a white stripe but most of that will be covered so no big deal. I did want to add in some of the extra leaves from the Harvest Rainbow Stamp Set so I grabbed my Fallen Leaves VersaFine stamp or VersaFine ink pad and I'm stamping leaves all along the edge of that brown ink where it ends you know to meet the blue and I really have no kind of rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm just taking leaves, stamping them in different directions, and adding a border um, between these two colors on my background. Some of that will end up being covered, but I really like this little added touch of the leaves. I think it just adds more to the ground of my background. So now it's time to figure out the layout of all my images. I have my pile of leaves and my cute little critters that are gonna be jumping in the pile of leaves. I have a few leaves that are just kind of flying around and then I have my mushrooms and flowers and little pumpkin to tie up the rest of my scene. So I'm gonna pop up some of these images. My critters are all going to be popped up, so I brought in some foam squares, and I'm gonna pop up my little mouse, then my cute raccoon, and my hedgehog. And when I was picking out my critters, I did make sure to pay attention to having critters facing in different directions. So I have my raccoon that's facing towards the right, my hedgehog facing towards the left, and my mouse Kind of facing down <laughs> so it really worked out to create this layout because i had my critters facing in different ways all of my leaves are going to be glued directly to my background with liquid adhesive so i did do as you saw kind of a dry run of all my images so now i know exactly where to place them when i have glue my mushrooms and my flowers are popped up, but I am going to use liquid glue anywhere where they overlap. And I love this little kind of bundle. The mushroom and the flowers together are just so pretty. I did pop up that cutie little worm as well as my pumpkin, and that will finish off gluing my cute little images, but we need a sentiment. So after I get all of my panels glued down, we're going to go ahead and stamp the other sentiment from the uh, grateful or sorry, thankful and grateful stamp set. So I glued my, uh, little critter panel to my bronze paper and now my bronze paper to my A2 card base. And I just repeat the same process for, like I said, this time I'm gonna stamp grateful. So I'm gonna just quickly go through this. You don't need to see me stamp again. And I did use the Fallen Leaves VersaFine color this time. So it's a little bit more brown compared to my images that I stamped in black but I wanted it to kind of fade into that pile of leaves on the bottom. I did kind of play around with adding it um, towards the top of my card, but I really liked it kind of hidden there in my pile of leaves. So I'm gonna pop this sentiment up. So I added some foam squares to the back, and then I'll go ahead and place that right there on my pile of leaves. I did want to add a few touches. So this time I'm bringing in my cave crystal embellishment mix. Again, this is my favorite. Iridescent is my favorite color. So when I can get embellishments like this, I just love them. I think I have two or three of these because I hoard pretty things. So if I have two or three, I definitely use them more, which is weird, right? So then I'm going to use my pickup tool to uh, get all those sequins glued down with liquid adhesive. And that will finish off our third and final card for this video. I hope you are inspired by all of these cards to use your Harvest Rainbow stamp set. As always, I will have all of the Trinity Stamps products linked down below in the description. So if you don't have any of these in your stash, you can do some shopping. Here's one more quick overview of all three cards, our shaker watercolor rainbow, our multicolored die cut rainbow, and our pile of leaves for our adorable little critters. 
Here is one more final look at all three of our cards using this stamp set as well as some other cute products. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye!